Yo, all right, everybody, we are here today checking out a little upcoming banger by the name of Xenotheria. Now, Xenotheria is a single player focused squad RPG that looks to change the common roguelike formula of your traditional card and deck builders. In Xenotheria, cards and blueprints are character focused, so each of the six planned characters have their own unique gameplay to build around. If you're familiar with uh, Baten Kaitos, a great series of games for the Nintendo GameCube, then I feel it's a good comparison to what Xenoteria aims for each party member. And much like Baten Kaitos, Xenoteria offers a rich, handcrafted world with unique biomes, which means no procedurally generated maps here. Good! That said, if you enjoy what you see here today, check out the provided link down below in the description to download the free demo and wishlist Xenotheria on Steam. Alright everybody, that's said and done, it's time for us to dive right in here. So keep in mind, this is going to be a demo that just kind of drops you in the middle of uh, some part in the story. I believe we're going to have control of three of the possible six squad members as I've mentioned here before. This is Wolf Hollow. It's the only way to get to the Bloody Tears Gulch where the shuttle crashed. Eerie Hollywood, well, I, don't give, I don't gotta give a voice to that one. Why is it called Bloody Tears Gulch anyway? See, this guy has a mustachio type of, like, skin thing going on, so that's a perfect voice for him. Long story, but trust me, it fits. Right now, we have to focus on finding the shuttle. If we don't get that water filtration back tomorrow, people start dying. So, let's see. There's a Norton as well, part of our party member we haven't seen just yet. So how about we bring him into the equation here? Well, what if we go at night? Maybe we can sneak past while the beasts are sleeping. Most of them hunt better at night. And you'll never see them coming. I'm liking the daylight option. Then let's go, shall we? Alright. So as I mentioned, it's going to be um, everything handcrafted over here. So it's going to be a single player RPG in that regard. Story, character development, all that jazz. Stay alert, predators around here can sense you coming from far away. We already have our first bit of combat. So let's indeed engage in this here. Don't worry, tutorial. I can take care of this for us here. God! Please, no! No! Now, what I like to do, homeboy here, Squiggly, I believe his name is, Mustacho Man, he's got like amazing range, so I normally put him in the back. Norton, kind of like a mid to front guy, can be very defensive oriented as well. And then um, our, like, thief, ninja <laughs> class over here, he deals with the poisons, he does a lot of damage, but he's also a little bit on the frail side. So somewhere mid usually works out for him as well. So all these cards that you'll see here will be character focused, as I've mentioned. So it's not like, you know, one of those games where everybody essentially ends up being the same character. These cards basically make all of these characters unique to the gameplay, complement to each other, etc, etc. So for now, let's just go in for some straight up attacks. Now, these cards have a particular range to them, as you can see over here, right? So for instance, um, Mending Mesh only drops it within our area. That attack that I used, I think we did the first two rows. I'm not sure if it actually reached to the back, but certain cards have a certain significant amount of range. Push, as you can see, can hit anywhere, which is fine. And what I'm going to do is, even though we don't have a particular card right now to actually use charge, maybe in the next turn it shows up and we could then charge open Norton for something really good here. So let's just use two there. We don't need a block. We could do Mending Mesh just to put some regeneration if we want to, but it's not really too imperative. And obviously we need a block, as I mentioned, and nobody's attacking. So the next two cards we're going to be using to be Push. That's going to use up all of our energy for this turn. So let's push this in this feller. Um, does it really matter where? Nope, but I'm going to push him forward. Great. So push, and then push him. Let's push him back, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Now, if there were enemies next to him, you could push him into them, and they would do some extra damage to not only this character, but whoever you push him into. So that's very, very good combos right there. Unfortunately, no one to really push him into right now, unfortunately. So he is digging down, which now I believe I mean, I think that means that he can't be pushed anymore, right? Let's see. Yep, cannot be pushed anymore. So he's going to do the same thing, and now homeboy here is attacking. Can we take him out with 10 action, or at least 10 HP damage before he attacks? Let's find out. Four, four, oh yeah, we got this. We got this in the bag, baby. So let's start off here with... Bada bing, bada boom. And then... This attack here with Norton. That's still not one of the charges that we do have. We didn't draw any charge card to actually utilize it, unfortunately. And as I've mentioned, Homeboy back here could attack from any range, so... 
And our boys, as you can see here, have some levels from our, you know, whatever point in the game they are at the moment. And we got some resources which we'll be using to craft more cards and use some of our blueprints here. So at the moment, we're fine. Let's see. We got some loot here. Unrefined ores. We have a nasty looking critter right there coming up. Can we, at the moment, craft anything, I wonder? Nope. So let's have our next fight here with a different type of enemy. Now this one is going to be more an aggressive type. The other one was more defensive. Charge up. And chain lightning on this boyo here. And you saw how I just shot around and did some damage all over the place. So the more enemies the better. And if you charge him up even more, it does even more damage. So can we take care of homeboy before he attacks is the next question. Uh, unfortunately, I'm too far away from range now to attack this dude, so I would have to move up. Mm-mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. I'm not sure if we could do enough damage this turn, so you know what? Drop a block here. And you're gonna also evade in case he comes after you. You are gonna move here. And you're gonna flashbang this dude to weaken him. And then... Chain Lightning, we need to move... Oh, I need this guy to move forward so I can hit with Chain Lightning. He's too far. He's too far. So, let's hit him with that. We'll use Quick Wits. Or I could just move this guy forward and attack that way. You know what? That's true. Kind of as best as we could do here with this turn. He's gonna evade. Nice. Okay, so this guy is... None at this point. But hopefully you're kind of seeing like how the combat just flows so perfectly well. And that's one thing I enjoyed about it, like everybody plays a little bit differently. You kind of have to, you know, complement each other a bit in combat as well. I feel like we have a lot of resources now picked up and here we're gonna have some story progression. I count three bodies, fleet officers of some sort. And it wasn't the crash that killed them. But it wasn't arachnids of sand hounds either. Zero slash wounds. It's like they were attacked by someone with a meat cleaver. Someone with ten meat cleavers. Oh, check out that massive hole in the ground behind the escape pod. It looks like some sort of burrow. I'm really starting to dislike this place. And that burrow is very important because that's kind of the, uh, the boss of this area. This person's head isn't just separate from their body. It's nowhere to be seen what happened to it. It's almost like something came out of the ground and just chomped on his head and went back into the ground, huh? Tality for you right there. B-class escape pod. Those poor bastards thought they got away safe. No such luck. This was their senior officer, lieutenant. Something ripped his back open. It's like a tunnel. No local animals dig holes this big. Now, we do have options. We can keep going out that way, up front. There's a big, giant bird waiting for us there. We could actually take this road. And there's also the road up that leads through here. So, again, there's going to be choices you can actually avoid combat in case you're not really feeling up to it or you just want to skip it altogether. And you can still get to different objectives and different points of the map where you are headed, depending on which road you actually decide to take. Or you can take all of them just for the extra loot. Really up to you. I'm going to pick up some loot though because I do want to do some crafting here and maybe some upgrades. That's going to be a bit more of a difficult fight. So for that, let's see if we actually can craft ourselves some weapons or some, by weapons I do mean cards. So one that I enjoyed a lot personally was Sparky Jack. We have enough for that. We two and five, but I also want to pick up Laser Burst, was it? It's the one that adds uh, fire. No, no, yeah, I think if you upgrade this one, it actually adds fire. Yep, we should be able to get both of them. So, craft this card. Give me Sparky Jack. Do we have enough for Poison Grenade on you? Yes, we do. It's a pretty good card. We could also make some more pushes. He's about to do something stupid. Let's go take on Big Flying Bird over here. Because I know that uh, Thief up there or Vagabond, whatever you want to call him, kind of leads to like a bit of a uh, side quest. Oh, you know what I forgot to do? You forgot to put the cards in the deck? Yes, I forgot to put the cards in the deck that we just created. God damn it. Because they're already, when you start off, all three of them already have 10 cards and they're equipped, which is their maximum. Damn it. 
Okay, so I'm going to use those new cards that I got for now. That was a waste. <laughs> special attack, special attack, and movement. Well, do we have a charge? No, we do not. That's unfortunate. A lot of quick wits, which uh, not really the greatest here for me at the moment. So let's start off by going after you. Luckily, these guys are just very fierce attackers. They don't really care about defenses, so hopefully we don't have to spend too much time. I'm going to have to use some quick wits here, it feels like. Flashbang and evade. Take the flashbang, let me do another quick wit, and a push. We can't push anybody into each other, so I'll just take this one for the guaranteed knockout. And this fella right here. Now, two energy left over. They're not attacking, so I don't really want a flashbang. Let's just use a weak version of Chain Lightning. It'll at least do some damage, so, you know, whatever. And we did keep our flashbang from our quick wit, so there's that. Now we could do some pushing. We could definitely do some pushing, and we shall. That is what's up. And attack three. They're moving. They're not even attacking. This is going to be a very, very simple fight. I had more. I had a hard time with them last time. I guess now I have a bit more experience. I kind of know, like you know, the I have like a bit of the meta built up. I suppose you could probably say. And you know, flashbang would actually take care of this guy. So flash him. Do we need a new guards after all? Not really. But, how about you put him into your deck this time? Yes, deck builder. So, let's see. You, I gave you Sparky. So let's remove, what do we want to remove from you? Let me remove one of these blocks and add Sparky Jack here. And for you, let's remove Quick Wit and Poison Grenade. And then for you, let's do... Block, laser burst. Let's go. And uh, we'll upgrade some cards later for a bit more damage. I kind of want to increase um, some of our basic damage up a little bit if we can. Should make the boss fight a bit easier for us. More loot. And again, as I've mentioned, we could go through there. I believe we could also just kind of go around this way. That wreckage isn't from the escape pod, looks like more than one ship crashed in this canyon. Which might explain the, uh, Magabonds over there. I think, I think this, does this circle back to them? Yeah, this, I think, circles back to where those Vagabonds were at. Looks like the tower took a beating. What tower? Hopefully the module's intact, if we could find it. In all this wreckage. Who built the tower in this canyon in the first place? Early settlers, surveyors, needed to get signal out to motors. When it comes to communications, Wolf Hollow is one big death zone. Great place to hide. Or get lost. Yep. The fleet side are using as an approach beacon. That module should have telemetry data for the shuttle and all of his escape pods. Hopefully the other escape pods didn't land in this canyon. The surrounding desert's even worse. You hear that? Muldons, fan out. Oh, it just puts you into a straight-up battle no matter what. So this is one of the- this is actually the tougher one of these fights. The other one that's on the map is a lot more easier. Here you're dealing with four in one go. And those dudes in the back, those snipers hit really, really hard. And here we go. Let's just be big old oafs about it and just do damage if we can. Let's remove that out of the equation first. And then start hurting. And reach that dude. That's a shame. That is a shame. I don't necessarily want to move him too because I'm in a defensive position. So I'll go after your defenses here a little bit. Um, I'm going to set up an evade because as I mentioned these guys hurt. And as much as I want to do chain lightning, it's going to be very minimal. So I might as well just do mending mesh on over here and just start thinking about mitigating damage as much as possible. Now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you see what they're doing? Oh yeah, they attack a lot. And now that he's over here, this dude is basically, you know, singled on to Norton. He's going to do a lot more damage with this attack coming up. Flashbang is indeed needed to reduce the damage coming up, so that's good. That's a good part. He's also setting up over here to do the same thing. Sparky Jack could be useful. 
Another thing I'll do is uh, more Mending Mesh to make up some of the damage, com damage coming up his way. And then we gotta go straight up attacks, I would say. I need these snipers gone from my life as soon as possible, so just keep going at them. And I want that charge, I want the Sparky with a block over there. I'll take Sparky. Sparky was cool about this. As long as Homeboy chills in his cloud, it'll do some passive damage. If he decides to move out of the cloud, it'll do some damage. It's a very cool little thing to have, especially once you have it upgraded. And block over here. And turn. Yeah, these guys hit really, really hard in general. He's locked on. Okay. We are hurt in here pretty badly. block here on you because you definitely need it. Some evading would have been nice too over here on this side, but uh, don't got it. Charge up and maybe next time we get ourselves some chain lightning. Fiver. Oh! Oh! Whenever this unit moves or attacks, it takes two damage and loses a stack. Well, that's no good. Way to heal him either too. Flash bang. I can take care of at least one of them finally. <laughs> if it means anything, one of them's finally dead. But the moment I use any of these guards, he's gonna get himself knocked out. All right, hombre. Now I've never lost a character before, so I'm not sure what happens when that goes down. If you get him next turn or not. Well, all of his cards are still here. That's going to be very, very hurtful, though. Oof. <laughs> okay, another one. Down. And this guy is setting up for his big special here, which we know is going to hurt like hell, so... Chain Lightning. We still have some charges here. We got to move them up to make that happen, so you know what? Move up. Chain Lightning. Oh! Let's go! What a baller! What an absolute baller Norton is! Man, this one was looking rough when we lost our character. <laughs> it was looking rough, but we came back from it. Oh, God! Oh, as I mentioned, this is a tough fight. Oh, jeez. Hope we got them all. Keep an eye out just in case. Meanwhile, Squig and I will find that telemetry module. Is this it? I think so, and it looks intact. Guys? You see something? Either I'm losing it or that ground over there just moved. Probably both. Either way, we should go. Okay, so let's see here. I do want to get laser burst with the burn ability. So it'll be two points for Squiggly, so make that happen. We still got one left point that we acquired with each of these dudes, but we already upgraded their cards one, so... Let me get the range, maybe, or the tech. Yeah, let me get the extra range for the poison grenade. Yeah, let's just increase the charge. Because then if we get that charge really high up and then hand ourselves the chain attack afterwards, could be good. A shack? Somebody lives here? Stop right there, I'll put you in the ground. He sounds friendly. We're just passing through. Says every bandit that comes through here. You have 10 seconds to leave. We're not bandits, we're from Moros. Eight seconds. But please, we're looking for a shelter from the supply ship, Deepuk. If we don't find it, then the city of Moros will run out of drinking water in two days. It crashed in Bloody Tears Gulch. You go into the Gulch, then I guess you're too stupid to be bandits. We have no choice, people are going to die. Shh, listen, do you hear that? Ugh. <sighs> Something's coming, watch out. And that indeed is Big Worm Dude. Our little boss here in this demo. And we do have Burning right off the bat, which is good. Set up some damage over time if we can. Let us go. Chain Lightning is here, but no charge, of course. Story of my life with this dude, huh? But we do have Sparky Jack. And this guy's over there attacking too. We should be able to knock out this dude right now. And we will. 
tail seems to just be moving, so not really my concern. Little minions also moving, not really a problem. You're attacking. Do we have any defenses? I'm not sure who he's attacking is the only problem. So, just in case, let's set up a evade on you. And we could attack, or we could just do Sparky Jack. Hmm. Mm, mm, mm. I'm just going to do some attacks for now. Oh, we still have enough for Sparking Jack, too. There's another Chain Lightning. So you know what? Now, let's go ahead and put this Sparky Jack on the tail. And then turn. Special attack. Or at least it's a uh, summon means uh, two... Wow, two more dudes. You saw you took damage right there from Sparky Jack. Okay. Now three dudes are attacking. It's a bit concern. Let's start off here with a little bit of uh, defense for you. I could evade at least one attack. You cannot. So let's handle that. And then... We gotta get rid of some of these dudes. And two attacks should do that for us. Okay. I'm gonna go against my better judgment here and just attack, attack to get rid of one more minion. And that's all we can do. That is all we can indeed do. I might want to move you closer, though. Just so that you could probably flashbang the boss next time. Big damage. Big damage. And we evaded, so that's fine. Alright. Not too bad. Oh, of course. All the charges in the world now. <laughs> well, let's push you into him. And... Uh, excuse me. He's gone. Now then, my friends, what do we do? You're moving. Do we use some charges for the future? I think we do. But I also want to block. Let me just only use one charge so we can block. Because he's still going to get eat some damage right now coming up. And with the leftover, we just attack Tail. The Tail does not get resummoned, I don't believe, so we should be trying to get him out of the way. Oh, he went after Ninja Dude. Interesting. Interesting indeed. He's attacking again instead of summoning minions, that's fine. Um, let's see. Poison Grenade. Yes, we do. Wouldn't like that, to be honest. No pushes. The pushes would not be useful right now. Let's move you here to do Flashbang. And, and, and. I could push you up. Oh, that's right! You cannot be pushed, I forgot about that. Damn it. That was a waste. Forgot about that part altogether. Well then. Mending Mesh here. I was going to use Poison Grenade. But now that um, he's going to probably get some damage, we need to have some defenses here and some mending going on. And we'll hold on to an extra attack card for next turn. Go with that. He went after Norton, thankfully, though. Still attacking. As long as there's some minions, that's fine. Can we take care of the tail right now? Like, that would be great. Let's start off an attack here to make that happen. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, we should have enough uh, attack cards here. Six. Yes. So mad about that push, man. Should have checked that little status underneath them. Let's see. 37 at this point, huh? Let's push you into him, because that'll knock you out. Do some damage to him. He's at 30, 34 now. Oof. Let's just go all out at this point. Forget the minion. I think that right now we're just doing enough damage, passively, actively, every sort of way, to hurt old boy here. Let me just toss you there. Let's bring up Quick Wit. Another attack. Hold it for next turn. Now, I do believe you have to, unfortunately, take out the minions after you take care of the boss. They don't disappear with the boss, unfortunately. It's more just like leftover baggage, really. Um, pushing, uh, and we don't have enough to push dudes into each other. Well, actually, yes, we do. Push you into the boss. Yes, sir. Take care of him there. Boss is indeed attacking this turn. Um, ah, no chain lightning. Charges, but no chain lightning. Well then. Hit him with that. And... Uh, we have some blocks all over the place, don't we? 
You don't really have one. Let's put that up just in case, and we might as well hit you with the flashbang to lower whatever damage you're gonna do. Worked out stunningly. Everybody's setting up special attacks. Do we have enough to knock him out right now? I think we do. He is gone this turn. And maybe even enough for the minions? I'm not sure if you have enough action points for that, but... Four for you? Oh, yeah, we do. It's over. You see how everything flows so well in combat? That's why I really enjoy the squad base and everybody has their own kind of like, you know, unique attributes to kind of complement each other. But as you saw, this was so much easier than fighting those four Vagabonds or just basically wrecking your entire party up and there it is. Either way, guys, this has been Xenotheria. Hopefully you have enjoyed all the information down below as I've mentioned. Check out the link if you enjoyed what you saw here today. Download the demo for yourself. There's other portions of the map that I didn't cover. Let you cover them for yourselves. And go ahead if you enjoyed what you saw here. Wishlist a game when it doesn't need to come out on Steam. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. I'll catch you next time.